Okay, my name is Rob or Robert, and so the talk is I Rob Bot. That is my one joke, my one pun, that's all you're going to get in terms of entertainment. It's the only reason I've got any interest in doing a talk, is I thought of that little crap joke. It's not even any good. Right, um, but for the last two years, um, what I've actually been doing is entirely other stuff I'm going to talk about. I've you know, got a job and stuff, but to entertain myself, um, I've been running little bots on Twitter, just literally to amuse myself. Hopefully to amuse other people, but mostly simply to amuse myself. Um, and so to get some background to this, I think we need to move to the next slide. Okay, so pre-bots, in the pre-history of the world, some of the stuff I was doing, um, I still run a website called Beta or B3TA.com that's made by some people. Um, I was also an editor of a website called Us Vs Them for the Mirror newspaper. And it was briefly popular until Murray shut it down, which was quite fun to be shut down. But, um, but along the way, um, one of the things that happened was that... Um, how does it work now? Oh, yeah, yeah. At the start of the S vs. M project, where I was literally taken into a little room, and they said, can you uh, copy BuzzFeed? And I thought, oh, give it a go. I don't, know, don't know how to do that. But, and then I was like, on my own for about a month. I meant to be like, putting together a plan. And I thought, I don't know what to do, I can't just churn stuff out on my own. And I thought, okay, I'll make myself a little kind of demo, jokey website based on BuzzFeed, just to sort of understand the headlines a bit. And so I chopped up their headlines, um, and I called it BuzzFeed, I don't know why. <laughs> but I literally wrote a crap bit of JavaScript that just shuffled some words around in the format. What I actually did wrong there, now that I know much more about this stuff, is that every single one of those words should be a uh, capital. Um, you know, they, which does make doing headlines a lot easier if you do capital word, capital word, capital word. Uh, but, you know, I did that as a sort of joke thing to try and understand their headline process. Um, and one of the things it spat out along the way that I found quite funny was it spat out the sentence, 24 car parks that look like Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Um, you know, they're presenting it to my, my senior colleagues at the time. They were just in love with this headline and going, can't, can't we just commission someone to write this article? This would be the best article. And he's like, no, we can't. It just, it just doesn't work, but it's a funny sentence. Um, and so, but that stayed with me, that sentence, through, through, through the project at Us Versus Them. And so I then bashed together. Well, actually, my colleague wrote the, the code for this, but um, I wrote the, the word you write in it of like doing a clickbait generator based on those kind of headlines. And this did really well because it was just a very simple thing of bang, show us another, bang, show us another. Uh, I remember looking at the stats and it had done half a million uniques. Uh, so it did quite well. Um, I think I've got a little slide there of it getting on Reddit and those numbers, I think, yeah, 300 comments and whatever, you know, people really enjoyed it. Um, and it had a little life of its own. I thought it was really good. Anyway, so the project closed down. Oh, that's quite fun, that slide. That's just showing you the very simple way it's constructed. You know, I just bummed together a spreadsheet. <laughs> then you could obviously imagine the randomizer. 17 bees that look like Alan Turing. 11 bits of acne that look like... I'm not going to say his name, because I can't remember how to pronounce the... But Anne Robinson said. Uh, you know, quite a fun little thing to do, very, very simple. Um, and so, anyway, but the project ended. I was a bit sort of burnt out from doing endless kind of things that were entirely about use social to make people click on a website. And I fancied doing something that was completely natively social and so there was no website to click on. And so that's where I thought, okay, I'll do a bot. Right, and so the first bot I had a go at doing was like the simplest one in the world. Uh, I just Googled around and I found a bit of code uh, that was a fab bot. So you could say, you could give it a phrase and it would go off every half an hour and go bloop, 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 fab, fab, the phrase. And so I called it, you're not your, and it just looks for the word, your spelled the one way, and then told, and then the little thing, the actual profile said, that if you've been fabbed by this bot, you're using your wrong. And obviously it didn't know, and it was just telling people, <laughs> just telling people they were wrong when they probably were right. And I let it go for a few days, and, and I realized I was just making people very, very angry and upset. And I thought, this is not what I want to do with my life. I don't want to make people angry or upset, I want to do stuff that's fun. So I deleted it, but it gave me a little taste of like really enjoying the process of, um, and how it was different to websites. It was like that you could put something into this social context and get a reaction back, whereas at the time I was seeing websites felt very 
dead. You'd put it into in the world, and maybe half a million people would click on it, but there was this sort of like dead thing in the middle of it, whereas the, the social thing felt it was alive, and I just wanted to play with that. And so I went back to the clickbait uh, generator thing, and I thought, oh, the thing I really want to do with it is add images to it. And I thought, well, that can't be that hard. Um, and I spoke to a friend of mine, a guy who's made a lot of bots, and he's called Shardcore, and it's worth looking up on social media for all the projects he's done. And I was like, how do you do the ones you're doing? And he said, oh, the crucial thing you need to know is just use Python. Python makes it really easy, because uh, whatever you can think of, someone's got a library to help you, and you can glue them together like Lego, and you'll be happy. And he was completely right, because I'm a terrible coder, and I was able to get some stuff up really quickly working. And what I wanted it to do was go off and find a relevant image for the you know, 15 sausages that look like a famous person kind of thing. And so it did that. But that is not that type of template, is it? That's a completely different type of template. And so, you know, so putting it live with that initial template, I then just sort of like got into a habit of, on a daily basis, of just seeing headlines and seeing stuff that was like knocking around social media and going, can I randomise it? Can I put a joke into it? So that obviously started out as a, a different joke that I saw someone do online about um, someone else and then. You know, you plug it into this uh, machine and you just does, 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 does different people. You know, so what's actually happening in the background is that um, it's picking up trending items, and obviously um, uh, Piers Morgan's trending a lot, unfortunately, uh, and then it's bunging them into the templates and then it's spitting them all out onto a private uh, Twitter account, and then if I think one's funny. I fab it and it gets copied over to the main Twitter account. So by accident, I sort of built a gorilla uh, CMS inside Twitter, uh, working by dear DMs. Um, so I'm just going to take you through some of the things it will spit out. You know, classic headline. If Adolf Hitler, sorry, Adolf Hitler is the most likely next Doctor Who, and here's why. You know, so that was a real headline. Well, obviously, it never said Adolf Hitler. It said someone else. I just put the randomizer in. This spider has spent over $200,000 to buy Jeremy Corbyn. Of course he has. Um, dollars because my code is too incompetent to support the pound sign. Um, Mel B. Quits as leader of the Conservative Party to spend more time eating supermarket hams. <laughs> supermarket hams is obviously a randomised object. Conservative Party randomised parties, Mel B. Trendy. And that all came together very well. Um, I remember that one getting a retweet from uh, Vic and Bob, not Vic, but Bob guy, Bob Mortimer. Um, I just think that was like a, an extra set bit of content that went to found Bob Mortimer mentioning supermarket hands. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> I haven't got a clue, you know. You know, uh, millennials probably spread them on toast, I don't know. Um, yes, of course, share if you want Thomas the Tank Engine, sacrifice the ancient ones. You've probably got a few shares. Michael Gove, the room that he pushed 86 bread and butter puddings up in the room, are incorrect. <laughs> the incorrect is, is, is crucial here. I do like a template that eats itself kind of thing that goes, do to you, you know, my favourite one has Bono seven times. Anyway, Tony Blair will make Tony Blair great against his Tony Blair. So obviously that started out as a headline about, um, you know, big orange president guy. <laughs> Um, share if you agree Jeremy Corden should nationalise all wasps in the UK, maybe socialist wasps. <laughs> there's, a, there's a thing, um, there's a joke format uh, called uh, CBA, it could be anything, and it's like when you write a joke and and it's got a decent of it, it could be anything, and that's a classic example of them, you know, wasps, but somehow it lands on wasps and wasps is the right answer. Uh, is Louise mentioned computer simulation? Why some scientists think it's more likely than not? <laughs> Starting from the Guardian headline. I always like taking a headline that's very wide, you know, as it just said, you know, is real life in a piece of much, but then you drill it down to an individual person, it becomes much more entertaining. <coughs> <laughs> George Orwell just raised his ex girlfriend's from worst to best, in that the results may surprise you. That headline uh, was a real headline from BuzzFeed uh, about uh, Katy Perry, and um, she apparently did that on a video. Uh, people are sharing this open letter to Nigel Farage, dear Nigel. Uh, and die, you're sincerely everyone. A template that always wins, almost like who, who, no matter who it lands on, um, you know, just be... Basically, I've built a machine that's very negative about famous people, and that gives me some entertainment when I'm doing my proper job. Uh, I'll get rid of that one. Um, Ed Miller, I snorted so much LSD, I thought it was a, a Nespresso machine. <laughs> 
I've got a list of like 200, no, not 200, about 1,000 now boring objects on this Nespresso machine. And, you know, it, it's a very useful list to have. What do you get if you cross Donald Trump? Probably Donald Trump, of course, of course, of course. Right, what I'm going to try and do here, if I can make this work, is I'm going to try and do a bit of a live demo. And this is a bit scary to try and do this. So I think if we can go into our presentation mode, and if I can see my cursor, I'm going to have to keep babbling away. Right, because I wanted to show that I can control this via the DM. So, can someone name a celebrity? Britney Spears. Britney Spears, okay, I'll try and type it in with one hand so I can... Britney... This is so wobbling now. Okay, we'll see if this works. In theory, I can sort of uh, talk to it and it will try and now push the word Britney Spears into a template list of over 1,200 or 1,400 templates. Um, and so, it might spit something good, it might spit something rubbish, it's a bit rubbish really. Britney Spears leads all references to half East and cheese streets from website. That was a, originally a headline about Radiohead, I think, who deleted everything on their website for a bit. Okay, I'll try one more. Uh, right, so if I go to my DMs. Another celebrity, please. You, come on, celebrity. Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, okay. Ed. Is it A.M.? Yeah. Yeah. Poor old Ed, he's, he's broken his arm, hasn't he? He's broken his right arm, um, which, and I have checked, he is right-handed. <laughs> right, let's try again. It says, I wish my program was better. Let's see if it works better this time. We'll give it a go. Right, because that's just a generic error message. It might work. No, it doesn't want to work. I'm going to do... One, try one more. Um, Theresa May. Sorry? Theresa May. 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 So, oh, come on, what's that big blob there? Right, okay. So, yeah, it's quite dark. Yeah, it's a lovely picture of her. So, so basically, that all goes through to this sort of like uh, private account, and I can just sort of like, if I fab one of those, actually, so I'll fab her, I'll fab Teresa, and in theory, in a couple of seconds or so, that will get copied over to the main account. Let's have a go. Let's refresh that, let's see if it can go. Yay, there it is. And we'll be able to see in a bit whether that's um, generated any shares. So I'm going to get back my talk and press the button that says present and goes to the next slide. Do, 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 do. That's just a, a grab of some of the code in there, some of the templates. I mean, it's not really code, it's just templates. Uh, so there's, uh, so there's literally 1,400 of them now. And so my little template thing can go, those curly brackets, that means Google for an image. That thing where it says sex acts plus stuff, that means combine the variables sex acts and the variable stuff, which are just things of lists of words, and pick a random one. Um, trends W1, so trends at W1, what that's doing is saying pick the word that's been sent to it and then only use the first word of it, which is quite useful sometimes anyway. See what's next on my old business. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, and so once I've developed all this stuff, just to amuse myself, it was then gave me this kind of little technological platform to do other, other little projects with it. And so I matched together uh, Swerdlock. Um, and my, my thinking with Swerdlock was simply that the, I, I just thought it might be fun, but it's also the Clickbait Robot project is so labor intensive because I'm constantly writing templates for it. I wanted one that you could just leave alone and didn't require any moderation. So this one's just got like, I don't know, um, 30 templates and it just spits out uh, on the half hour because the hour I felt was taken by some big game clock, uh, just a random, a random sort of sweary update. Um, it's, had, it's had quite a nice little reception in the world. I, I, I got some messages from some people saying they'd integrated into their Slack, which I quite liked. <laughs> um, and then, actually, what I'll do, um, and I, some of the, some of the um, swears in it are actually crowdsourced, so I want to try if I can get away with this by Let's see if I can do it. Let's click the dock. 
right, you swears. Right, this might go very badly wrong, but I believe in um, just getting it going anyway. Right, so what I'm going to try and do is post my own account, uh, a Google Doc, and ask people for swears, and let's see if we get any by the end of me naturally. So I, I, I prepared. Right, now, I did prepare a little message. So if I go there, and then click that one there, and then go there, and then delete all this rubbish here, that should do it. Okay, so hopefully, now click through to that, and we'll see in a few minutes if it gets any, any work. And we'll go back to our presentation, which I don't know where it is, it's there, and present. So we'll see if that works in a few minutes. Uh, so that's some of the stuff we'll piss, uh, or spit out. F and L and blame Alan Shearer, it's 11.30am. It will spit out a lot of very, very bad things. Um, I did also glue it into, for my own entertainment, I glued it into um, Amazon Echo, uh, which um, was quite fun to do. And I learned by doing that that um, Amazon Echoes do actually beat that swearing. But you can get round it if you concatenate the words together. So if you put no space there, you can make it say. So that's how you make things swear if you want to do that. Right. Anyway, so by doing these things for my own statement, it's led me to this strange and unfortunate situation where uh, people keep asking me to, to do more of them and ones that I don't really want to do. So when Teresa nearly people thought she was going to resign, I was like pressured into doing stuff on her. And you know, it gets a bit of a pain in the ass. I didn't really want to do that one. I had to do it. Um, yeah, I'll move on from that one. And that was another one I was pressured into doing I didn't want to do. And so I won't talk about that one. It was bad. But I'll talk about this one because this one's more fun. This is one I did want to do. Uh, which is the Yoko Ono bot, which I thought I'd try and do something that was not sweary, basically, and just quite sweet, because I saw um, one of her tweets, she spat out, she said something about, uh, wherever you go, take a bag of garden peas and leave a pea wherever you go. And I thought it was a, a, just an amazing sentence. Um, <laughs> but I, I immediately wanted to take that sentence and randomise the garden peas and just see what you get out of it. And so I just did it for my amusement, and right, that's what it spats out for the first thing. Carry a bag of steamrollers, be a steamroller wherever you go. And I just immediately thought I really liked this, I liked the idea of a bag of steamrollers. Um, so I just, uh, I researched her a bit, and I uh, found that her funny little tweet formats were based on, um, they were mostly based on a book she'd written in the 60s uh, called grapefruit, which where she'd go art piece one and stuff like that, and she'd have all these ideas that you could do um, to, and I just thought they were great, so I just sort of like played with them and put objects into them. Make a list of your favourite Chris Summerjee to post it to someone who feels sad. <laughs> <laughs> Looking out the window, do you see that cloud shaped like the Peter Capaldi? <laughs> to dinner. <laughs> Never let, and this is serious this one, never let the regret of your life be that you have not said I love donkeys often enough. <laughs> this got a quote tweet from a donkey sanctuary in Birmingham, which really made me happy. <laughs> it's Kanye West awareness hour. Please be aware of Kanye West the next six minutes. This came actually not actually from anything Yoko said, it came from an ad or on Facebook for pensions that said it's pension awareness hour. And I just thought this was the most fantastically hilarious doll thing I'd ever read. <laughs> and so I, then I reread it again and realised it said something else entirely, but it gave me an idea of um, the Yoko thing to do. What is the greatest gift you could receive from anyone? Bits of war. <laughs> we are all memory sticks. <laughs> We are all memory sticks. Paul McCartney wrote an album, uh, it probably a terrible album, but he wrote Memory Almost Full, and it was a reference to, uh, he had some rubbish like Sony uh, uh, iPod, you know, music player, and he was running out of memory as the air message just spat out, so. Think about the Earth, imagine Bergerac thinking about it too. There's a lot of references, because all these are using the same word list as, as the other projects. So a lot of references to old TV, so I'm an old man. The atoms in a minced beef crispy pancake will be inside the sun. It's true, it is true. Right, my letter. Cook a white dog food. Imagine there's no tea bags. And that one's done really well, like 450, 490 likes. 
Um, and obviously that's riffing off the, uh, the famous, uh, apparently, John Lennon song. It gets a lot of criticism, this template, because it goes, imagine there's no sort of, there are no, but the, the, the actual song does go, imagine there's no countries. So he was grammatically wrong, and now it's his own to do it like that. Um, but there's also criticism that that's a John Lennon line. But recently, um, Yoko Ono has successfully put in a claim uh, that's been accepted by some copyright society that she's a co-writer of Imagine, because in one of the last interviews John Lennon did, he said that uh, she, he wrote it based on her book, Grapefruit, and if he wasn't such a misogynistic pig, he would have given her the credit at the time. So history has shown that that is her work. <laughs> right, some quick, quick, quick bonus material, unreleased bots. Um, this is just rubbish. I've never put this out. It just sort of like sits there, spitting one out an hour, and no one, it's got a padlock on it, and all it does is that, which is puts a swear word in the judgment. <laughs> My name is Von. No, I can't even say I'm too embarrassed. Material, material. I'm, I'm ashamed. No. <laughs> This did not happen, and that's why there's a padlock on it. Right, another bot I have not uh, released uh, because it's not finished, uh, but just just enjoying the top of the pops format, really. Up, one place, number eight, Prince, my name is Amphia Turner. Well, I like it. It's like James Gordon thing of erasing the audience when they don't enjoy it. And straight in at number 21, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, the tracks of my soul. <laughs> But yeah, 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 yeah. Paul Young, wherever I lay my first fork with apple sauce, that's my home. Same. <laughs> Nico, all the sound of purgatory. Frank Sinatra, I've got empty biscuit tins under my skin. Oh, should we see if the crowdsourcing thing's working, or has it gone very badly and someone's deleted it all, and so it's that Fraser. We have got. <laughs> Bloody hell, Clarice on a bicycle, or bugging me sideways, tickle my testicles. I don't know if it's this room or just my Twitter followers doing this. Um, holy shit sauce. And so what was quite nice about doing, doing the crowdsourcing thing is like, what I'll do later is I'll go through, pick the ones I like, but also I can use them as inspiration for templates because like something like where it says jizz on a toe ring, you could like then put the randomizer objects into it and so it would say, um, Something else on a, uh, 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 a Sinclair Spectrum Zoic 81. Um, right, so where's the old presentation thing? It is... It's that one, isn't it? Cool. Present. So, yeah, that's going okay. So, conclusion. Uh, jokes are good for the soul. You know, I've done all this stuff just messing around doing my other job, but just as a, basically as a, a side project. Uh, Python is easy to play with, so why not play? And also, and the sadly thing is here, I'm going to have to move this so you can see it. Uh, if you don't want to do, if you want to play in this area but can't bother to any code, I recommend this website, cheapbotsdonequickly.com. It's nothing to do with me, but it lets you do a very quick uh, bot very quickly simply by shuffling words around. And someone's had a recent hit with it, the uh, Danny Dyer bot is just done using that. So that's my thing. Thank you.